Now, we know it seems to be selective here, and we also know it seems to be temporary and conditional. And why I would say that is because when David was confessing his sin in Psalm 5111, what did he pray? Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take what? Your Holy Spirit from me. So the Holy Spirit in coming upon people for power, for service, uh, for ministry, if you will, seemed to be selective, it seemed to be temporary, seemed to be conditional, that if there was sin in the, in the presence of, of that individual, the Holy Spirit could leave, of course. We even know of Saul. It says in 1 Samuel sixteen fourteen that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Now, when you get to the New Testament, you don't find this kind of language. You find it not being selective. And let me have you, uh, just to go into the book of Acts, and let's go to chapter 2, and let's hear what Luke tells us, beginning at verse 37. It says, now when they all heard this, and that is the preaching of what Peter had told them on that day of murdering the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, it says they were pierced to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself... And then he says, and with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. And so then those who had received his word, they were baptized that day. There were added about 3,000 souls. The Holy Spirit that very day came upon 3,000 souls. And we enter into a new era, if you will, of the Holy Spirit taking up a permanent residency in the life of a believer. Not just him being with you, but now him being in you. Over in Ephesians chapter 1, it mentions in verse 13 about being sealed by the Holy Spirit. It says it this way, In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, Having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. The Holy Spirit is given. And he says here, after listening to the message of the truth, the gospel of salvation, having believed, you were sealed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit. You were given the Holy Spirit as a down payment. You were given the Holy Spirit as a pledge, as an Erebon. And the Erebon, as we mentioned many times, is like an engagement ring. Man, when you give that ring to that would-be bride, you are promising her that, that you will marry her. And Erebon speaks of that pledge, that, that engagement ring, that promise of a future inheritance, if you will. As he says here, he's given to us as a pledge of our inheritance. This is proof that there is a future inheritance for every child of God by the fact that he has given to us his Holy Spirit. Now, notice here, it says that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. That is a permanent thing. That is not something that he has just given you temporarily and then he pulls back on it. He takes it away from you. No, this is permanent. You don't hear anyone in the New Testament praying as David prayed in Psalm 51. You don't hear anyone say, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. You won't find that in the New Testament. Because the the Holy Spirit's presence in your life is permanent. It's not selective. He doesn't come on just a few people. He doesn't come on just certain members in the body of Christ or or pastors. No, he comes on every child of God. Every child of God. Listen to what Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.4. You say, well, this is not a good verse because he's speaking to a pastor. Listen anyway. Guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in... Did he say in you? Did he say in me? No, he uses a plural. Us. Both he and and Timothy. 
but not just he and Timothy, but the rest. He says, the treasure which has been entrusted to you. If you go over to James 4, where he is speaking there in verse 5, he says, do you, he says, or do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose that he jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us? And there you can pick up the rest. God has designed from the very beginning that the Holy Spirit would come upon his people, come upon his children. He would be with them forever. Would not be selective. And the passage over in Romans 9, or Romans 8 rather, verses 9 through 11 speaks it loud and clear. Listen to what it says. He says, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, what is that verse telling us? Well, if you don't have the spirit of God, then you're not a believer, right? But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Three times he mentions that the spirit dwelling in you. And there he is writing to the church at Rome, believers. The Holy Spirit is not selective in the New Testament as I mentioned, he is permanent. In John fourteen sixteen, Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. And just again, mentioning that, that sealing there in verse 13 of chapter 1 of Ephesians you also have this verse in verse 30 of chapter 4 where Paul says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. He is permanent. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So, beloved, this is, this is something that we need to grasp. For example... In dwelling and filling are two different things. The Holy Spirit taking up residency in your life is one thing, but Him controlling your life as you yield to Him is another thing. And as we have spoken on that issue of being filled with the Spirit, it's very imperative to us that we understand the difference between the two. When you sin, the Holy Spirit doesn't leave, the Holy Spirit is grieved. As it says in Ephesians 4.30. He is grieved. He doesn't leave. And the only way that you can overcome sin in your body, in your flesh, in your life, is by the Holy Spirit. Believe me, you don't want Him to leave. <laughs> but Jesus says He's with you forever. Permanently. Permanent indwelling. 